tough conversations with your teen are just that, they're tough. But have you ever put yourself in their shoes? The sensitive conversations, definitely difficult on both ends. As a teen coach, advocate, and parent herself, my next guest understands the stress, understands the challenge, and is here to give us some key ways to help your teen facilitate a hard conversation with you as the parent. Jesse Funk with Ivy Girl Academy joins me. It's great to see you, my friend. Thanks. If you can give us a reference point to start things off, what sort of difficult conversations, what are some scenarios that you are hearing teens and parents are kind of conflicted over? Yeah, a lot of the teenagers I've talked to lately, they say it's so hard for them to go to a parent and say, I disagree with you, ah. or I have a different opinion about something that you feel really strongly about. Those, like, that's what I specifically want to talk about. Obviously, talking about, you know, hard conversations like pornography and cutting and, and I don't know, sex and, you know, periods, all those hard conversations but specifically how the teenagers come to you when they're developing their own ideas and their own opinions that is something that I think triggers parents so much because we have, we have our pride and we have our egos involved and I'm so guilty of that so I think it's really relevant and we have our goals for these teens we want them to maybe live life in a certain way for their benefit of exactly. course exactly but when the conflict comes up you say these principles these guidelines can really help create a safe space the first mm -hmm. step you say as a parent is, is to give your child permission to mm -hmm. be honest and to be open. Is that verbally yes. giving permission? Yes. Kids really need to have everything spelled out. If you ever wonder like or assume that your kid knows something, don't assume. Like say it. You have to say it out loud. I recommend at least once a month just bringing it up. You're in the car driving to school and you say, honey, I want you to know that you can talk to me about anything. Anything. Even if and it's just out of the blue. Absolutely. And just like put it out there and just put it out there often because sometimes they really don't know. So if you're saying you can talk to me about anything anytime, I promise I'll try not to freak out. Teens are so sensitive to the parent freak out. Uh -huh. So if you say that, you know, they're a little more likely to try and talk to you. Are there any nonverbal cues we can give them that still promote that same honesty and open atmosphere? Absolutely. Which goes with one of one of the tips, like just making sure that we don't freak out. Like that's totally nonverbal by saying it. If they say something to us and we just really want to get like angry about it or we want to punish them or we want to do something. They're then seeing it in your face, your eyes, all of it. Exactly. And then they instantly shut down. They're like, I'm not talking to my mom. I'm not going to talk to her about that if that's how she's going to act. Uh -huh, so uh -huh. they're just so sensitive to it. We talk all the time about how we're our child's best models, best examples, best teachers. Are they watching, Jesse, how we handle difficult conversations, mm -hmm. even adult to adult? Heck yeah. I mean, I, yeah, I mean, it's so, so important to be what we want to see. So if we, yeah, the same thing, like if we're freaking out, if we get angry, if we get sad, if we have a, a large emotional reaction, teenagers are just so sensitive to it. They hate it. Mm -hmm. So if we can just force ourselves to stay calm, um, but also making sure that we're modeling the behavior when we're talking to other people. And then I think it's really fun. This is just a fun little game you could play. You could say, hey, child, like, come here, come talk to me. And you child, say, come yonder. <laughs> so you say, like, I respectfully disagree with a choice that you made, or I love you enough to be honest with you, and I need to give you some feedback. And you call it right out, and you say, I know that's super cheesy, but that's that's how I want to make sure that you, how I'm approaching you, so that you know I respect you, uh -huh. and I want you to have your own ideas. I don't want you to be a clone of me. And then you flip it on them. If you want to take it to the next level, you say, I want you to say that to me. And you could have some fun with it, and you could yeah. tell them, you say, what if you said, Mom, I respectfully disagree with your choice to dance like a freak in our kitchen and embarrass me. Like, have some fun with it, add some humor, and then yeah. let them know that they have permission to say that to you. Because they sometimes, they honestly, honestly don't know. Yeah, and then comes the hold back, then comes the withholding, yes. and then spirals a whole new level of communication barriers. Mm -hmm. You talk a lot about, I, I know, to the teens that you work with and the families you coach, facilitating a space, mm -hmm. a safe space. What does that look like, and how do we do that on the parental front? Yeah, we just have to make sure sure that when we're approaching these very hard conversations that our child really does feel safe because sometimes the kid is so worried that they're going to get punished they're worried their phone is going to be taken away and that phone is such a huge part of their identity so it's the best way to give a consequence for sure right but right. be careful when you take it and I have a personal story about this real quick so last night it's like my daughter just really knew what we were talking about today <laughs> She's like let's practice this mom yeah and so I did I took her phone which doesn't happen very often she's not doing so hot and with her grades in school and so I take it and she's crying and she's so mad at me she's up in her room I go up and I talk to her and I'm I'm defending my position I said this is why I really needed to take it I need you to focus and yada yada so I'm lecturing her she interrupts me and says mom you are not listening to me 
you are not listening to me, you don't understand. And my initial very natural parental reaction was to overpower her sure. and make sure that she knows that I'm the boss. So I did for about 20 or 30 seconds. I was like, but you're not listening to me, you don't understand us. So we just got in this power struggle right, and then right. this little voice in my head said, Jesse, you hypocrite. Because <laughs> you're like preaching this stuff. So I forced myself to take a deep breath, to calm down and I said, I am so sorry. You're right, I'm not listening. Please help me understand. And we ended up having a nice conversation and I still had to be the parent. I'm never saying like, go easy on right. your kid and baby them. Right. I still took the phone, but then she understood my position and I understood hers and she felt validated. So now she's more willing to tell me what's going on. And she had a bit of information that she did not tell me before. Mm. And I didn't know. And even if that understanding doesn't come in the moment, it sounds like you were able to resolve it yeah. right on the scene, so to speak. Yeah. But I think of just, just the, I guess, parental ease you would be at later mm -hmm. knowing that in the moment, even though the, you may have left things still contentious, yeah. that I was able to be open and provide that safe environment that you're talking about. That would yeah. give me the reassurance to know at least I checked those boxes. Exactly. So and at least you tried. And honestly, I really believe that a lot of teenagers, they don't get enough credit for being smart enough to recognize that we're trying as a parent. So when we're making the effort to say, I love you, I do want to listen, please help me understand. And we are trying to exercise patience and empathy and everything. Mm -hmm. They see our effort and that goes a long way for the overall relationship. But if we're not trying at all and we're like, yeah. nope, I'm just taking your phone, like it, we're just looking at the behavior, not what's underneath the behavior, then of course they don't want to talk to us. And then we cannot be shocked when they're cutting and we didn't know. And we can't be shocked when they have an addiction to pornography and we didn't know. Or when they're going to their friends about things and getting, you know, the wrong kind of direction and support. And at the end of exactly. the day, you do want to be that resource, right? Yes. You do want to be that, that person they turn to in difficult moments. Absolutely. And of course we want them to talk to their friends, but we all know friends can dramatize stuff, blow out of proportion, give them horrible advice. We know that. And so for a lot of things, we need to reinforce, please come to me, please talk to me, because I will I will not freak out and I will listen and I want you to know that I'm a resource for you and I can Great help advice. you find the answer. Great advice, Jesse. What's coming up at Ivy Girls Academy? We do have a we do have a camp coming up on um, August 7th through the 11th. We're super excited. So registration's open on IvyGirlAcademy.com. All right, we will link you over from our website. Thank you so much. We appreciate you being the coach in our corner.